After a day's rest, Dome One announced we had to leave the area for a few days because it was advisable to put distance between us and those entities. He said they affected me deeply, although I was not noticing their effects yet because my body was not sensitive enough. In a short while, however, I would fall seriously ill if I did not go to my place of predilection to be cleansed and restored. We left before dawn and drove north. After an exhausting drive and a fast hike, we arrived at the hilltop in the late afternoon. Don Juan, as he had done before, covered the spot where I had once slept with small branches and leaves. Then he gave me a handful of leaves to put against the skin of my abdomen and told me to lie down and rest. In a matter of minutes, I began to feel an exquisite warmth and a sense of supreme well-being. It was a sense of physical comfort, a sensation of being suspended in midair. I could fully agree with Don Juan's statement that the bed of strings would keep me floating. The soothing feeling of peace and plenitude that I experienced in that mysterious place aroused some deeply buried emotions in me. I began to talk about my life. I confessed that I had never respected or liked anybody, not even myself, and that I had always felt I was inherently evil, and thus my attitude towards others was always veiled with a certain bravado and daring. True, you don't like yourself at all, he cackled and told me that he had been seeing while I talked. His recommendation was that I should not have any remorse for anything I had done, because to isolate one's acts as being mean or ugly or evil was to place an unwarranted importance on the self. He told me I should relax, but not fall asleep, and be in a state of awareness for as long as I could. He said that the bed of strings was made exclusively to allow a warrior to arrive at a certain state of peace and well-being. In a dramatic tone, Don Juan stated that well-being was a condition one had to groom, a condition one had to become acquainted with in order to seek it. You don't know what well-being is because you've never experienced it. I disagreed with him, but he continued arguing that well-being was an achievement one had to deliberately seek. He said that the only thing I knew how to seek was a sense of disorientation, ill-being, and confusion. He laughed mockingly and assured me that in order to accomplish the feat of making myself miserable, I had to work in a most intense fashion and that it was absurd I had never realized I could work just the same in making myself complete and strong. The trick isn't what one emphasizes. We either make ourselves miserable or we make ourselves strong. The amount of work is the same.